Welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Pastor Jason Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. Father God, we lift up this time to you. I ask that you bless it. Open up our hearts to receive your word. It's manna. It's bread. It's practical. We can use it this week. I thank you, Lord, that your word is also seed. Plants deep in the good soil of our hearts and produces change in life on the inside of us. Grow us, Lord. Holy Spirit, be our teacher. Teach us what we need to hear and to know and prepare us for what is coming in our lives. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 You can be seated. I welcome those who are watching on the stream and YouTube or however you're tuning in. Don't forget about our daily Bible study. Me and my brother do that every single day. You can just go to YouTube and type in daily Bible study. We'll come read up. We do it every day. We do a morning scripture. We pray every day. We have a lot of fun. I want to welcome also, all the way from Pensacola, Florida, my son Matthew Anderson watching us on the stream. We welcome you. We cheer for you. We have in prayer, of course, all of our servicemen and women, because uh, times are getting a little tricky for them. We just pray God's blessing and God's protection over their lives. We thank you, Lord, that you cover all of our troops wherever you send them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today I want to talk to you about seeing what God is saying. And the Bible says that Jesus, when he was talking about the sower and the seed and the word of God comes to us, he's, he said, lest they hear with their ears, see with their eyes, turn their hearts, and I would heal them. The, the miracle, the manifestation of God's power and his goodness in your life wasn't just from hearing the word, but he said also the seeing of the word. I have to learn how to see what God is saying. Abraham, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 1, that the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. And God's going to be speaking to Abraham now for a little while. They're going to have a conversation. That's the word of the Lord coming to him. They're going to be talking about how God's trying to get a, a child into Abraham's life, a promised son. God made this promise back in Genesis chapter 12, and really it was about 10 years prior to this moment. Abraham's been waiting for 10 years so far. Nothing's happened. His wife hasn't gotten pregnant. Sometimes there's things that we're believing God for, that God's even promised to us, but they haven't happened yet. We could start to see the lack. We spend time seeing and planning for the what ifs. How many know we we often plan for the what ifs? We see, well, what if this happens? What if things go wrong? We're seeing the negative things. We see that disease lasting a lifetime. Or fear comes to us and has us imagining the worst moments and even tries to bring pictures of death into our lives when that doctor's report comes. I'm saying don't see those things. Instead, see what God is saying. See, an angel didn't visit Abraham and begin to speak to him. He was just hearing, but the words came to him as sight. They came to him as a vision. There was a bridge somewhere between what Abraham was hearing and what he was seeing because he heard what God was saying as something of a picture. When you start to see what God is saying, when you see the mountain moving before it moves, when you see the giant falling before he fell, when you see yourself as the head and not the tail, when you just see that you're healthy, even though that sickness is still on you today, but you see what life's going to look like when you don't have a cane, and you see what life looks like when you don't have to take pills anymore, and you see what life looks like for your children when they don't have allergies, and you see what life's going to be like when diabetes is gone, and you see what life's going to look like when all the debt has been cleared out of your life, and you're living debt free, and you see what life looks like like when God's abundance hits you, you start to see the things God has said, and you allow God to begin to repaint the future. God has goodness and riches and abundance in mind for you. We have to learn how to see the way God sees, and Abraham was showing us this. Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says, the burden that came to Habakkuk which the prophet did see. Now that word burden actually is is an awful translation. A better word might be utterance, and I think you might have a different translation on your phone or your your Bible. Uh, Oracle, the oracle that Habakkuk, which Habakkuk the prophet did see. I want you to see that words came to him, but he saw the words. And God was looking for prophets who didn't just hear what God was saying, 
God was looking for prophets who didn't just say what God was saying. He was searching and choosing prophets who didn't just write down what God was saying, but he was looking for prophets who could see what he was saying. He wanted to repaint the future of the world with a Messiah in it, full of forgiveness and righteousness. And he wanted men to be able to see what he was trying to do on the planet, that he might begin to repaint the future that he had for mankind, for all of humanity. The Bible says that Moses went up on the mountain and there God came to him with the word of the Lord. And as God explained to uh, Moses how to build the tabernacle. He gave him very specific details of sizes to build the tabernacle and how many cubits for the Ark of the Covenant and how to make the utensils and the tools and told him how to make the tabernacle. At the end of the passage, it says, and God said to Abraham, see to it, say see, see, see to it that you make them according to the pattern which was shown you on the mountain. Do you see that Moses had learned how to see what God was saying? And when God talks to us and that word of the Lord comes to us, he's saying, I want you to see it. And you know the word of the Lord is coming to you. God doesn't want us to go into our 2020 with cloudy vision with not really understanding what he has for us. He isn't interested in our own personal vision for our lives, but it says many are the plans of a man's heart, but it is the Lord's plans or will that will bring you victory in your life. He's interested in giving you a word and a vision for your 2020, for your body, for your finances, for your marriage, for your family. And the word of the Lord comes to us. You ever have that happen before? Maybe you're reading the Bible and you're just reading these, all these different passages and then all of a sudden you see this passage that says, stand and see the salvation of your God. And the, the word of the Lord goes, and you go, oh, I got, I got, I got it. I, I get what you're saying. I, you ever have that happen? The, the sermon's happening and, and you're just listening and the little short preacher, he starts to sweat and scream or something. And then, and then I'm talking about my brother and, and then just talking about me and, and then. And then he says some scripture, and then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit grabs that scripture and goes like this, goes, and you go, oh, that one was for me, right? And then the next 10 minutes, you don't even hear what the sermon is. He's telling some stories, people are laughing, but you're just like, whoa, I got it. Or you're praying, and the word of the Lord comes to you. Or, or you're, you're talking to a friend, and the word of the Lord, do you like that sound effect? I don't know, is that working? <laughs> Is it awkward? I don't know. Is it? Okay. There it is. And it comes, that's how it sounds when it comes to me. The word, like a lightsaber, I heard someone say. Too much Star Wars on my brain. And we say, and we say sometimes to people, oh, I see what you're saying. That's what the word of the Lord wants you to do. It wants you to say, oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. See, see, I'm not talking about something that's complicated. I'm actually talking about something that we do all the time, but maybe not all the time with God's words. You know, fear will come to you and try and get you to see what it's saying. It'll try and get you to imagine the worst case scenario and even plan for the worst case scenario. Well, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if I lose my job? And then if I lose my job, and then we start to paint out a picture and we start to see what it's gonna look like when I, when I, ha I can't pay my bills, or we see what it's gonna look like when I have to take this medication the rest of my life, or we see what it's gonna look like when that estranged relationship never gets better. God wants us instead to resist seeing the, the painting the enemy wants to paint in your life and he says, I want you to start to see what I'm saying. What have I said about your future? What am, what am I saying? You know, you ever, where's the readers at? People who read fictional books. Do you love fictional books? Go ahead and put your hand in the air if you love reading fictional books. And, and so when we were young, some of us, we read books and, and, uh, uh, for school or fiction or for fun. And the thing is, is, you never hear somebody who says that they read a fictional book and then saw the movie. They never say the movie was better. They always say the book was better. Never hear somebody say the movie was better. Why is that? You know, when you read a, a book and a passage and it's talking about, and there I was by the waterfall and the mist was wisping past my face and the, my hair was, and whatever. And then, and then you, but before you know it, you're reading words, but suddenly it's not reading words anymore. It stops being mechanical within just a few sentences and you're whisked away to some magical land where you're living in some imagination, and you can see it in three dimensions clearly, 
And you live the story, and no movie can ever cause that to happen. God's not painting his picture for you on a movie screen, but he's doing it with words because he wants to whisk you away to a magical land. I want this morning for you to get whisked away to a magical land where all of God's promises are yes and amen, where all of his riches have overtaken you, where his blessing has overflowed in you, where the breakthrough you've been standing for has already happened because on the cross of Calvary it has in the name of Jesus. Amen? And we can have that kind of life. God is teaching us to see it. The word of the Kelly came to me the other day. It's kind of like the word of the Lord. And, and she came to me with her phone app called Pinterest. Now, if you don't know what Pinterest is, Pinterest is a place where husbands who are better than me build things <laughs> for their wives that I can't build. And my wife was putting on a wedding shower for our soon-to-be at that time uh, daughter-in-law and and uh, wanted to have a bohemian theme and wanted to have it in the backyard out, outside. This is last spring. And she brought me this picture and she said, can you build this? That's what Pinterest is. It's full of things that men have to build. <laughs> and I looked at it and it was, it was basically what she wanted was a 16 foot long wood table built out of pallets that would sit on the ground. And it was beautiful, the one she showed me. And I, got, I have two options now. I can either, I can either say, uh, yes, I can build that, or no. I, and so my ego, <laughs> can you build this that some other man built his wife? My ego wants to say, oh, heck yeah, I can build that. Are you kidding? I can, I can crush that thing. That guy didn't even know what he's doing. That's what my ego wants to say. But there is this other voice, the voice that doesn't want to build a table. And that voice wants to say, uh... What is that? I don't know. Did they make that out of wood? That seems crazy. Do you have to use glue? Do you, have, do you have to sand it and stuff? I don't know if I can cut things. I'm not sure. That voice can be very loud. But the ego voice won. Of course I can build that. And as soon as I started to decide that I was going to build this thing, and I had about a month and a half to do it, I, uh, I had to see it. I had to see what she wanted. I had to picture it in my mind. I had to Picture it so much so that I could come up with measurements and I had to get pallets and measure pallets and lay things out and begin to plan and go to the wood store and get the wood. And there was a lot of planning and preparation that went into. I could not manifest the word that she had spoken until I could see. In the same way, God wants to manifest his goodness in our lives. And sometimes he brings to us a word and it happens instantly. But other times, like Abraham, it might take a little while. And while it's taking time, I should begin to see what God has said. My mom and dad have made a life of seeing what God has spoken to them. When my dad got throat cancer, he saw himself still preaching. And he didn't see what fear was trying to say, that, hey, you're not going to be able to preach anymore. You've got a few more weeks left in you, and then that's it. Instead, he saw that he was going to be healed of it. Even before he was healed, and it took a few months. My dad says that he used to walk around in this building before we even laid the foundation for it. He would walk through the halls, walk up and down the pews. He would see himself preaching in a church that didn't even exist yet. When my mom got rheumatoid arthritis in 1992, it was a crippling disease, and doctors doctor said that this was a very aggressive form and that she would be handicapped. She couldn't even get out of bed. My dad would carry her to the car and to the doctor. And while she was believing God and standing for God, but her healing hadn't manifested yet, she would see herself doing things that she couldn't do. She couldn't even get out of bed, but she was visualizing herself as she prayed and thanked God for her healing, skiing, running, things that my mom didn't do anyways. Mom, you don't even ski. I know, but I'm gonna. You know, one day, a few months later, my mom was completely healed of rheumatoid arthritis, and that winter, she really did go skiing, as she had visualized. The same thing she saw. What happened? God was repainting a different future than the doctor had painted. And you can do the same thing with your life, with your finances, with your relationships, whatever God has promised you. When I see the Word of God and the promises of God, you know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing Jesus. Because Jesus is the word. And everything Jesus has earned for you, bought for you, purchased for you on that cross, you cannot separate his promises from the identity that which is Christ. 
So when you see his promises and goodness happening in your life, you are seeing Jesus, the word of God, operating in your life. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap. We might as well begin to see what it's going to be looking like when we don't have to have a cane anymore. We might as well see what it looks like when we don't need that wheelchair anymore. We might as well see what life's going to look like when that final bill gets paid. Imagine just imagining yourself, imagine yourself, imagining yourself, and then see that as an imagination and dream about it, writing that last check to pay off that last bill. Or see the, the, the lender calling you and saying, hey, we don't need that money. We're, we've canceled your debt. I hear that. I, heard, I talked to a guy just the other day. We prayed over his debt in the fall, and he got debt free in three months, having an $18,000 bill canceled with a phone call. You say, well, how's that possible, Pastor? That's not even possible. I know. It's not possible, but that's how Jesus works. See, if you could just pay it off by whittling away at it and sending a little money here and there and doing, a, doing it the normal way, then there was no miracle. I'm not saying don't do it the normal way. By all means, stop charging and start whittling away at that thing. But thank God for the supernatural debt cancellation that he's also bringing because he is partners with you in his promise. Can I get an amen? What will life look like when you're not losing your temper and you've been delivered of anger? What's that going to look like? You could see yourself, you know, you lost your temper and, and you've been dealing with it and you've been trying to get over anger for a long time. You could see yourself experiencing something in your mind and not reacting and losing your temper. You could visualize, what does that look like when I'm not controlled by that anymore? What does it look like when I'm truly delivered of that anger? You could see yourself delivered of that addiction. What is my life going to look like when I'm not addicted to that, when it's not wasting my time, when it's not stealing my money? What will my life look like? Let me see what God sees. You know, God sees you as righteous, holy, and completely set free. Did you know that? Why don't we see what he sees and stop seeing what the world is trying to paint for us? I like to see myself sometimes laying hands on the sick and seeing them healed. You know, didn't Jesus promise that, that we would do greater works than him? What did he do? He walked on water. He calmed the storm with peace, with a word. He laid hands on blind eyes and saw them healed. He got crippled people up. He delivered people. He healed broken hearts. What if I began to see myself doing that? You know, Pastor, I could never see myself praying, laying hands on somebody or doing that thing. You know, the other day, my, my wife, she noticed a, a, a deal on her cheek and her skin. And she showed it to me. There's a discoloration in an odd form forming on her cheek, right on her skin. And she's putting cream on it and stuff, but as days went by, it started to get bigger and darker, and it was raising off of her face. We don't know what, I'm not a doctor, we don't know what that is. And the creams weren't working. We decided to pray and speak to that thing, to come off of her. In the name of Jesus, we know this was not God's plan, and we cursed that thing. And then one morning, a couple days later, she was just washing her face, and that bump wiped off revealing brand new skin. Now that's a big miracle. That's a huge, enormous miracle. We don't know what it was, but it wasn't good. But now it's gone. You know, that didn't happen in a church service, but that happened in our bathroom, in front of the mirror. Jesus often healed at the synagogue, but he also often healed in the marketplace, down by the water. He healed anywhere that people would believe. It's the same thing for you. You begin to imagine yourself laying hands on your children, laying hands on your brother, laying hands on your neighbor and your coworker. You might say, Pastor, I could never do that. Well, then do it in your mind first. See yourself doing it so that you get comfortable doing it so that when it actually happens, you'll be ready. I laid hands and prayed over many cancer healings in my mind. I would envision it. Somebody comes to me and says, Pastor, I have cancer. And in my mind, I laid hands on them. In my mind, I see them. And I, and I spoke to it, and then I, I pictured them telling me the cancer was gone. They had gotten the report. I did that many times before I even saw the very first time where I laid hands on a woman about four or five years ago, and she came back six months later completely cancer-free. Now I've seen it so many times. And the other day I was visualizing and dreaming about laying hands on a sick woman, and the Lord brought to me the vision. I can actually see her. I know what she looks like. I haven't prayed over her yet, but what I do know is I've already prayed over her in the spirit, and she has already been healed. It just hasn't happened yet. I'll meet her sometime in the coming months, I'm sure. I'll be like, oh, I've already prayed for you. Come here. God's about to heal you of cancer. How do I know? Because I've already seen what God is saying. 
Any, you would say, Pastor, I don't have a Bible college degree. I can't lay hands on the sick and see that happen. Listen, you don't need a Bible college degree to lay hands on the sick. You need Jesus Christ, and you already got him inside you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, and you're his hands and feet. He's going to operate through you. What if I began to see myself doing things that I've never done before? See myself running, but I don't have the energy to run every day. See myself winning. See myself strong. See myself on top of the mountain victorious. What if I saw myself blessed in the city and blessed in the country? Seeing myself blessed coming in and going out. See, don't see the sickness, see the healing. Don't see the lack, see the abundance. Don't see the battle, but see the victory. Don't see the problem, but see the opportunity. Don't see the enemy, but stand and see the salvation of your God. Don't see what Satan's saying, see what God is saying. When we start to do this, it repaints what God is trying to do in our future. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 5, the Bible says that God, in this same passage, same conversation, takes Abraham outside and he says, now look towards the heaven and count the stars if you're able. Can you imagine how long it would take to count stars? But God commanded him to do it, so I, I know Abraham was obedient. He'd be like, one, two, three, four, five. Wait, I think I, did I count that? I think that was four. Was that four, five, six? Can you imagine how long he was staring at the stars? What was God doing? He wasn't battling over Abraham's ears. He was battling over Abraham's eyes. What I'm saying, Abraham, I want you to see. Abraham's like, I just want a kid. God's like, I want you to start to see it. And he put it in a place that Abraham would see it often. Every night when Abraham went to sleep, he would have to look at those stars. Every night when the sun went down, he'd go, oh yeah. He would be reminded every night God placed it clearly in front of him. I'm saying the same thing to you. When you start to see what God's saying, I think sometimes we, the word of the Lord comes to us. And then three or four months later, out of sight, out of mind. It didn't happen. We believed God for it. But it seemed like that fire petered out. And I don't know what the word petered out even means or where that comes from, but it petered out. It went away. It was gone. Why? Out of sight, out of mind. What if you kept that thing in front of you? Like Abraham, you found some way to see it and remind yourself of it. Maybe you tape something to the mirror. Maybe you're believing God for to not be alone and you want to meet that special someone. I just encourage you, find a way to remind yourself. Every morning when you wake up and you get out your devotions and you get out to pray, I want you to pour a second cup of coffee. Pour your coffee pour the coffee for that person that's not there yet. And you keep speaking to that empty chair. I thank you, Jesus, that you're bringing me the perfect spouse. And they're going to sit right there and have coffee and pray with me one day. Somebody say amen. Maybe you're trying to get your temple in order. You know, God's on board with us getting our temple healthy. We do our part and he does his supernatural part. Go out and buy an outfit that you love. Put it in the size that you wish you were and hang it up right in the front of your closet. So every day when you walk by, I want you to tap that thing and say, thank you, Jesus, that you're speeding up my metabolism. I thank you, Jesus, that you're changing my cravings away from Andy's custard and crumble cookie into the healthy things. I thank you, Jesus, that you're causing me to want to exercise and get healthy. What am I doing? Not only am I doing my part, but I'm relying upon God's power and strength in me to do his part. And I'm seeing what hasn't happened yet. And one day, if you'll do this, you're going to start seeing that you're going to fit into that outfit. You're going to find that spouse. Maybe you want a different job. Start to see yourself in that job that you do want, the perfect job. But now go out and buy maybe some piece of clothing that you're going to wear on that first day of the job and, and hang it right up in the front again. I'm just giving you some ideas. I thank you, Lord, for that new job. That first day on the job, I'm going to wear this outfit. What are you doing? You're seeing it. When... When my wife and, and Pastor Holly got the vision to, to put together the special needs classroom, the Champions Club that we built here at the Living Word now, and it's going to be open in Easter, by the way. Easter Sunday is when we open. It's beautiful. If you haven't walked back there and seen it, the construction's well underway. Right on the way out of the exit, uh, out this side of the building, you can hang a left and see the classrooms that we're putting together. And that word of the Lord came to him. It was an overwhelming word. We don't have the space, Lord. 
We certainly, the, the extra funding, we'll have to raise it. We'll need a miracle, Lord. How do we do it? What curriculum will we use? What people will be in place? Sometimes the word of the Lord will come to you and seem like it's impossible. In fact, most of the time it does because it's God speaking and he likes to do the impossible things. One of the things that they did was they traveled and toured other churches around the nation. They went to California and saw churches that had successful special needs classrooms and talked to the people. What were they doing? They were learning to see clearer what God had given them as a vision. They were clearing up the cloudiness. You see, when you see it over and over again, what was cloudy becomes clarity. Now, all these months later, the, build, the room's almost done. They can see it clearly. The people, a lot of the people are already in place. The leadership's in place. The curriculum's coming together. All the equipment's coming together. Even the money has come in supernaturally, fully funding this entire project. Somebody say amen. amen. What, was, what was the key? To see it. When the Lord came to me with a vision and said, I want you to, to put churches in schools. I want Living Word to put churches in schools in Uganda. That was a big, overwhelming project. How do I have no money? How would we do it? How are you going to put this together, God? It was six years ago. One of the things that I did, me and Benjamin, we put together, Benjamin's the guy who lives in Uganda now, we put together the plans, and I laminated those plans, and I slid them down the slot between my nightstand and the wall next to my bed in a spot where nobody would see but me, because that's where I go, and it's kind of on the other side of the room. And I, I, I took a picture of it, because it's still sitting there today. I still see it every single night as I'm going to bed. What is it doing? It's reminding me, oh yeah, thank you Jesus that you're making this happen. It's not out of sight and out of mind. I've learned this principle. I see that thing all, that, here, they got one that, where it's all rolled out though too. And, and I see this thing happening in the name of Jesus. I see what you are doing, God. I see that the money's coming in. I see that you're bringing in gifts from afar, Father God. People are calling the church saying, the Holy Spirit moved on me. I want to give some money towards the schools and churches that you're building. And boom, it's actually happening. And now, this next month, not only have we opened up the church last year, but we're opening up the school in February. February 1st, we're opening it up. Here's some pictures of the completed school now. Praise God. What was the key? By thinking about it. You know, Abraham had another 15 years of seeing this promise happen before he got it. He kept seeing it and seeing it, but it wasn't until he was 100 years old, 15 years later after this word came. 15 years that he kept looking at the sky. Pastor, how long do I have to keep seeing it before it happens? It might be a little while, but don't stop seeing it. Put it somewhere where it's going to constantly be a reminder while you keep believing God for it. How long am I going to be on this medication, pastor? It's already been 10 years. I believe God it's going to happen tomorrow. Somebody say amen. But if it doesn't, I want you to stay in hope and keep seeing it. See what it's going to look like when you don't have to pay that money out every single month for that prescription. See what it's going to feel like when you don't have to take that medication anymore. Can somebody give the Lord a hand clap of the good things that he's going to do in your life? The longer you spend seeing what God is preparing for you, the more you'll begin to make plans and prepare. That's an important thing because when I begin to plan and prepare, it means I've moved my faith into expectation. I'm expecting it to happen. In the book of Genesis in chapter 15, back to this story in verse 2, Abraham said to the Lord, what will you give me seeing I go childless? Look at the word seeing there. And they... The hair of my house, the hair, he was praying for more hair to thicken that up. No, no, air, sorry, wrong one. The heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Then Abraham said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house, one of his, his servants, is my heir. You see, Abraham had planned for worst case scenario. If I never get a kid, I better have a plan. So I'm going to make Eliezer my heir. It just didn't happen. And this is what God says to him. And behold, that word means see. The word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your heir. But one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. You know, sometimes we try and dumb down what God wants to do in our life. Right? He comes to you with a promise and you're like, well, maybe that promise isn't like exactly what he meant. So maybe... You know, maybe God's not giving me like a real kid, but maybe it's going to be Eliezer. Maybe it's going to be like my servant kid. But no, no, God said it's going to come from your seed. So here it is. It's saying this. 
This is going to come from your own body. God's clearing it up. But look what God is doing. He's saying to Abraham, I need you to unplan what you've planned so that you can take on my plan. You may need to unplan some things in your life so you can take on God's plan. God's like, I'm not interested in your plan for Eliezer. I got a different plan. I'm trying to repaint your future right now. And what I need from you, and he's talking to us right now, is your participation. I need you to believe what I'm saying, and I need you to see what I'm saying. Because I'm trying to do something new in your life. God is trying to release goodness and victory riches and abundance, health, healing, energy, relationship, wealth, all of these things into your future. All we have to do is begin to see from our faith what he's saying. And these things will interrupt our plans. Mary had plans. She was planning to get married to Joseph. But God came and interrupted her plans. She probably had a wedding dress picked out. She probably had the venue picked out. She probably had everything laid out of how beautiful her wedding was going to be. I understand this, right? We just went through a wedding process, a lot of planning going into it. But God came to Abraham, a messenger from the Lord, I'm sorry, uh, to Mary, a messenger, an angel of the Lord. You're going to be with child. How will this be, she said. He said, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and the power of the Most High, and you're going to give birth, and you're going to name him Jesus, and he will be the Savior of the world. Interrupting her plans with God's plans. Now, this is the word of the Lord coming to Mary. <laughs> What does she do? Be it unto me, or let your, be words, let your words be fulfilled in my life. Be it unto me, as you have said, some translations say. And then the next verse. Then Mary got ready. Look at this right here. Pull it up. Where is it? At that time, Mary got ready. It's the next phrase. The Bible wasn't saying that she went and put her makeup on and did her hair real quick so she could leave. It got but, the Bible's not concerned with that sort of thing. What was she getting ready for? She got ready for what the angel of the Lord spoke to her. When you start to see what God is saying, you'll start getting ready. It's like a woman getting pregnant. She conceives that word in her heart, just like she conceives a baby in her heart or in her womb. When that baby gets conceived, how many knows you may not even see anything yet, but she knows. Oh, it's happening. And that promise of God's very much the same way. It comes to you. <laughs> we want to start seeing it. And as she's seeing it, what does she start to do? She starts to prepare for it. The longer she sees it in her mind, thinking about that baby coming, she starts to get an urgency. I got to get the baby room ready. What is she doing now? She's planning and preparing with expectation. In fact, we even use the word about a pregnant woman. She's expecting. Same thing for you and I. That word of the Lord comes to you, you begin to see it every single day. You keep it on the in front of you. You're seeing the word. And what's happening? You're preparing now. You're making small steps. Clarity is coming to the vision. And with that, you're expecting now. And just like Abraham, he was 100 years old, that baby finally came. Just like you, you may have been standing for a long time, but I want you to know, that if you'll learn how to see God's word, that in 2020, that baby's finally coming. That dream you've been believing God for, that health breakthrough that you've been waiting for, that walking in victory that you've always wanted, it's gonna come to you. It's happening. John the Baptist, he saw Jesus with his physical eyes, but he shouted out this, behold! He was saying, I see the Lamb of God, which is the word. It's the same picture. John the Baptist said, I see the word. He was a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way for the word. He's preparing by seeing. The seeing gets us preparing and gets us expecting. And he cried out. Because when you see, you begin to cry out to your body, to the disease. Hey, sickness, behold, the word of the Lord is coming. Prepare ye the way, because healing is on the way. When you see lack disappear, you are crying out, behold, lack, debt, the word of the Lord 
the Messiah is coming and setting you free from all lack, from all debt, that you might be a lender to nations and a borrower from none. When you see the Word of God working in your life, you're repainting the future of what God has for you. And I just want to challenge you today. If you'll begin to see what God has said, see what He's spoken over your life, the goodness that He has for you, see what tomorrow's going to look like when the depression has been lifted and you're happy and full of joy. See what your tomorrow is going to look like when the finances are better, your relationships are better, when your children have come back to the Lord. See what the holidays are going to look like next year when the families come back together. See what God is saying as He elevates you, opens up doors for you, gets you into that job He wants you to have, the right wage, doing something that you love. When you see the dream happening, that you've let grow dormant, but now it comes back to life. Because why? You've put something on your mirror. you put something on the coffee table. You put something in the car that you see every day. You attached it to your keychain of your keys. And every day you're saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that this promise is coming to pass. I can see what my life looks like when I'm in that new house. I can see what my life looks like when I have the car that you have for me. I can see what my life looks like, Father God, when I lay hands on the sick and I see them recover. I can see what my, my life looks like when I lay hands on my children and see the flu leave. When I lay hands on my spouse and see the sickness leave. I can see what it looks like, Father God, when the giant falls or when I speak to the mountain and I see it move. I can see what my life looks like, Father God, when the storm is raging on and I simply say with the word of God, peace be still, and it is. I see what it looks like when I've walked into the fire, but there was a fourth man on the inside of it, or I've walked through the valley, but I do it with boldness and strength. I see what it looks like when I stand on the mountaintop and God has raised me up and I stand there victorious and defeated my enemies before me and there's a banquet table and God says eat I see what my life looks like in Jesus name hallelujah and amen when you see the word you are preparing for his invasion into your mess and readying yourself for the answer you need and you're getting your body ready for and your life ready for and your relationships ready for all of God's goodness I just thank you and praise you Father God if you receive it today shout out I believe it Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we're going to continue this conversation on our daily Bible study. You can go to YouTube and type in daily Bible study. We're the number one daily Bible study in the world on YouTube. And we're going to continue this conversation. We do a morning scripture. We pray every day. It's maybe 10, 12, 15 minutes long. Yeah. Subscribe to it. You're going to love it. we got our Married for Life book out there. You know, me and Holly found out that, you know, what destroys relationships? Fights. And you know what? There's a way to get in and out of arguments in less than five minutes and get rid of 98% of all the fights that are going on out there. So, you know, imagine if you got rid of all those fights. Well, how do I do that? How do we get rid of the dumb fights and then be able to get in and out of fights in five minutes? And if you enjoy my stories, every chapter has some of me and Holly's dumbest fights. We fought <laughs> over potato salad, flip-flops. I love it. You name it, we have. And so you can get this on Amazon. Just type in Married uh, for Life and Scott Anderson. You see all the books that I have. We want to spend a moment, and if you're watching this and you're not saved and you don't know where your eternity is going to end up, it's so simple. You know, it's not about rules. It's not about religion. It's not about following a set. It's all about believing. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you're saved. Simple, easy. Say this prayer after me. Believe in your heart and you have it. Everybody say, Dear Father, I ask you right now, come into my life, be my Lord, and be my Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for all of my sins and was raised from the dead. I believe that Jesus is the Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. You're saved. Amen. Well, if you want, we would love to have you partner with us in what we're doing. You know, this word that Pastor Scott's preaching is going all over the globe, the daily Bible study as well. And you can be part of what we're doing around the world. So I just encourage you, visit wakeuptv.tv. You can donate right there and join the team of believers that are making a difference. And if you don't have a church home, find one. It's so important to a great life that you are planted in the house of God the Lord. Remember that this is the day that the Lord hath made. Come on, let's rejoice and be glad in it. See you next time.